um, we're at quarter or so right now. This goes for like half an hour. I, I'm thinking I'd probably just go for 20 minutes. I have about 25 slides. Um, so we want to leave it open at the end for like kind of a little panel discussion or just we're free to ask all these pets for questions. I know we have enough of those and everyone wants to know more about the local pet store. So um, Jill and I work together a lot. This is, this is not unusual for us to present together. We do grassroots workshops together. We do lobby one on one. We got another one coming up. Um, we have a lobby one on one workshop in Rochester on Monday. Um, but this is this is just a combination of a bunch of uh, projects that I've worked on with my group of Mo Awareness. Um, so they're just, I call them grassroots work projects. They're all local. Um, there you go. Okay, so how I got started, um, I have a degree in business and I worked for Jam for 10 years. And um, I didn't know one animal activist or animal welfare person. I just, you know, worked like everyone else and I didn't have those circles. So. Um, I found this farm, Sasha Farm in Manchester. Has anyone heard of them? Oh, oh my gosh, are they cool? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have it, you gotta go, especially in summertime, it's beautiful. Um, and so when I surrounded myself with other people that were doing activism, I wanted to do it. I'm like, well, there's people out there doing something. I can do this. Let me let me take a project. <coughs> so I went to um, Taking Action for Animals in Washington, D.C. It was a conference, and I came back all energized, you know, I'm like, I can do something. i got to figure out what, though. So I picked um, Puppy Mills because I thought it was something that I could relate to because I love dogs. I grew up with dogs. And then I wanted to learn more about farm animals, and I thought, well, I can't be a, a farm animal activist until I know more about farm animals. But um, So I went to a local uh, pet land protest. <coughs> I'm kind of hiding behind the sign because I'm like, what am I doing out here? <laughs> Hopefully no one at the office sees me, you know. So, um, but I just thought it was just so exciting. And I thought everyone needs to know about this. People, I didn't realize there's pet stores selling puppies. I actually saw an ad for Petland. You want to open your own pet store? It was like they made it real easy, you know. It was in the in the paper. So I, I ended up going into this one, going, why is my dog shivering? Things just didn't look right. And but anyway, so it's funny that I'm staying in front of the pet land. But that store ended up closing after months of protest. I think we were there about eight months and it closed. So that's um, and then while we were protesting that store, a new store in Northville opened up and we we're in Huron Valley. Okay, Kelly's not here, but Huron Valley sent out an SOS. Like, yeah. No way <laughs> no way is a pet store opening up in Northville. Everyone will think that they're good and they're not, and we have to prove this. I'm like well, I'll do it. I'll do it. So I set, I set up a, a parade, and um, we just walked our rescue dogs in front of the store, like <laughs> laps in front of the store. I thought, what a great idea. This will put pressure on me. Everyone talking about it. I didn't know what else to do. I was kind of new to campaigns, and I think just the whole town talking about it, it put so much pressure on her. She just, she just closed like several months later because she, she, she was an experienced store owner. And, um, getting in all kinds of trouble. So it started, my group started with that. We formed Puppy Mill Awareness, and um, we're a meetup, and we have other pet store campaigns. So I just put this collage of all the stores that we've closed at the top, <laughs> <laughs> our current campaigns right here, and I kind of do some breeders look if someone comes to me and needs help, and then our projects at the bottom, which I'll talk about today. So Paws and Claws closed. This is an empty storefront. I love to take empty storefront pictures. <laughs> 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 This one is a liquidation sign. Mm -hmm. So they have a bar now. Oh, I, oh, I know. We had to go in there for a The Partridge Creek, oh, anybody know what's in there now? No. Oh, okay. the one oh, the Northville one is now a bar. So we've been in there and celebrated. But this one, they opened in Partridge Creek and we're like, no, this isn't going to work. You know? So we talked to all management and they seemed a little bit like they were listening, but we weren't sure what they were going to do. So we just said, well, we're, well, we're going to have Puppy Mill Awareness Day here. It's coming up. We're going to bring all the media. And 10 days later, they, they liquidated. So we're like, oh, this should have been the front. I don't know. But a lot of people were complaining because it's a dog friendly mall. So a lot of people knew about it. Patland Westland, we did 20 months of protest. Um, yeah, we were there a long time, just about every Saturday. And you know, uh, we were just persistent. They didn't want to go. Everyone didn't want to go away. So that one closed last year. And then the Macomb Dog Flipper, he was trying to open up a new store, um, and we got him on probation. And now he's in jail, um, and he's he's banned from having animals for after that too. Yeah. So <laughs> that was big well, success. Dog Flipper. Yeah. 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 Well, well, that he would he acted wow. as a rescue, and he would get free dogs um, and try to flip them. And, uh, 
And he worked with some breeders too. Okay, so these are our current campaigns. We're at Paws and Claws every Saturday in East Point through May, and then we're going to give them a break so they can close if they want to close, and then <laughs> 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 or switch to adoption, and then uh, but he's putting up a good fight. And then the family puppy, uh, we're in Flint right now. If anyone's from Flint, we need help every Saturday from 12 to 3. My mom's there this weekend. Me and her are going to alternate. And then we're at 12 Oaks. We're going to start up the spring again. I gave everyone the, the winter off just because we needed a break. And we'll be back up in the spring for six months. Um, in the garage salesman, there's a guy um, selling out of classifieds out of his garage in Milford. It's actually Brighton Township. And he's illegally operating. He's not commercially zoned. And then Kim Koss is on probation, and we caught her violating the probation. And then My Puppy Paradise was a mile down the road from Animal Control in Genesee County. Mm -hmm. And we kind of put some pressure on her, and um, she ended up moving out of town. So, But not closed, but she moved to the west side of the state. And these are our projects, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them. But we did a pet store study. I'll, I'll show you some of our findings in the kennel study. Um, on the ho holidays is when most pet stores sell puppies. They, that's the biggest sale of time of the year. So we do roundabouts and we get them these all these different neighborhoods and, and try to get the word out. And then she talked about our pledges. And when I first formed the group, I didn't know what to do. We had a, like a planning meeting, and I said, "How about we do a new calendar?" <laughs> <laughs> Not a bus. So all the dogs. <laughs> and the dogs took off their collars, so it was a way to <laughs> for <laughs> survivors that wanted to get involved and everyone likes to tell their survivor story so it's an educational it was a way to get the members together and participate in the project but then you know someone said oh we're exploiting them again you know <laughs> but it's kind of cute. so um we do information booths for every big um ex uh, big event like the pet expo um i try to go to other things that are not necessarily pet related like the Plymouth ice show we have a sculpture but we go to a lot of different events too where we can get the word out with our um, information. Like Veg Fest is this weekend and we'll have information with the Veg Fest at the, at the Rock Financial. Um, so we're always looking for volunteers. Just that if you don't feel like protesting, you can always do an information booth. Um, there's always things to do in our group. Um, just for every Saturday, we might be in two or three locations. This was uh, Pat Land in Westland. Uh, we had an employee come out with her uniform and join us because one of her dogs was sick and so she's Oh, I'm with you now. So she kept her uh, uniform. And uh, so, yeah, we're pretty proud that that place closed. Um, our, our holiday roundabout rallies came from best friends. They do a lot of protesting. Um, everyone was familiar with Utah. Um, they gave me the idea. So we hit um, st we hit uh, 12 Oaks Mall. We were at Paws and Claws. We were at Greenwood. Uh, we did not do um, Garden Land. Um, we decided to go back to Paws and Claws. We were at the Family Puppy. Um, but we, we get so many stories from Thanksgiving through December. Just about every day I was at a protest. And I, I think I left this in here because I wanted to show you in December, this is the family puppy, and this is the number of shipments throughout the year. And I think some of them, like, maybe if we even them out, maybe um, it'd be more accurate. But you can definitely tell November, December, and January, that's when they sell most of their puppies. Okay, so we started getting into more investigations. Um, we don't, like she said, we don't have a lot of puppy mills in Michigan, like the big commercial breeders. We only have nine that can sell the pet stores. So the family puppy, which is a high volume store, they have five stores. They import a lot um, from Ohio, Indiana, uh, Minnesota. So we decided, no one, no one seems to believe us because the store is so clean and they look, you know, their, their health is so friendly and they seem different. Everything looks happy, you know, they do birthday parties, so how are people going to believe us unless we have visual evidence? Because we can look at inspection reports and show people, look at these violations, but he'll just talk them away. You know, well, everyone has violations, they fix them and they correct them. So we said, we're going to go down there and we're going to look at ourselves and get these pictures. We're not trained, <laughs> we don't know what we're doing, but we were able to get into some kennels. And so we did, we did just like um, Humane Society, we called it, you know, a five-month investigation. And we were able to get the media to come out. The media does not like to come out to protest, and they don't like to pick on family-owned stores. So it's really hard. And the story that she did didn't seem really fair on our side, but she did the story and she came out. So this is fucking the Lord who's staying point last year. Um, so we, like Jill said, we did, we took a positive approach instead of targeting all these stores and making you know, the, the angry mob picking on a family-owned business. Um, we decided, well, let's. Let's take advantage of this program that they put together. 
we went around and had different teams of people go around to different stores and ask them to pledge not to sell puppies. And it was a really good way to put pressure on to have a lot of good media. We were you know, front page of the Oakland Press and we got a lot of media stories out of it and some editorials. So it was a good way, now we go to the pet stores that are selling and say, look, if they're pledging not to, would you? I know they're going to agree to you. <laughs> but you know, maybe eventually after we close some more stores. But it was a definitely positive approach. Um, this is a pet store study I just put together in February. Um, because I had collected so much information, I thought, well, this would be another good reason to go to the media without totally targeting one store. Maybe they'll do a story on it. Um, so what I did is I put together, this is a list of all the stores that I'm aware of that are selling puppies in Michigan. There's 52 stores, um, mostly storefronts. Because sometimes what people that sell at their house, kind of, they can be labeled a pet store too because they're not breeding, but they're getting from puppy mills and then they're selling out of their house like a pet store in Maine. But I tried to just get storefront type stores. Um, this is on my website. And I have cards in the middle of the table with links to my website. It's a meetup, so they format it. It's hard to, don't complain, it's hard to find things. But I do have a file section, and this is in the file section. And I'm working on a website called The Hall of Shame, which is going to have every pet store and all the information I have about each pet store, with videos and everything that I have. So when someone says, does this store sell puppy mills? You can go to my Hall of Shame and see what I know. Because it's hard on my website to see, because we have a message for it's, it's for meetups, not necessarily for education. Um, OK, so then just graphically, you can see most of the pet stores are in the Detroit area. So we have about 30, 30 32 in the, in the Detroit area. And just to give you a visual in case you're thinking, what one is the closest to me? Um, you can see where we're targeting Novi, East Point, family of pets is um, here, and this is, we're mostly in Flint right now. And then the ones with X's are the ones that have closed recently. <laughs> and this is on our website too. So I was surprised that there were so many people in trade centers. Like every time you go to a trade center, it's like someone's got a table up. Gibraltar, there's Taylor Town. Um, there's another one at, there's another one at Taylor, but I think they moved, did, did you want to go to the, oh, um, um, by county, um, Wayne County has the most pet stores. Um, stores known to be importing, like I said, I've tracked since 2009, I've tracked all the um, shipments coming into the state because they have to have health certificates. The Family Puppy is the largest because they have the, the five stores, Petland, Novi. Um, I think Westland would have been up there too, but they were not getting health certificates until I turned them in and they had to start. <laughs> <laughs> Still, they had to start, they started, then I started, okay, that's where they're getting their dogs from. So. And then you can just look down here um, for the rest of them. But it, on average, you know, uh, 200 dogs are coming into the Detroit area or in Michigan a month. So about 2,500 animals come into a lot of state for pet stores. The, these are some of the stores um, that are importing you to pet supply House of Pets, Garden City, Dearborn Heights. This is one of the worst ones. This pet station in Dearborn There a lot of complaints, a lot of dead dogs. Really, really bad. This is the one that we're protesting here. Um, is actually, kind of low volume, maybe two or three a month they sell. Um, breeder information. Uh, these are the primary states that Michigan ship, ships from, which we call the puppy mill belt. Um, five. Um, I, I said, well, five thousand puppies came in in the two, in two year period. So the two best stores. I don't know those numbers. Um, these are some of the states that they import from. <coughs> Family puppies are the largest chain on this side of the state. And then the VIP Pets is on the west side of the state. They have four stores. And you can see that they, they get them from Indiana, it looks like there. So um, then I have a list of the stores that have closed. They also get them from um, you know, the out of state. <coughs> so just a side note, I, I did meet with the NBA to talk about the pet shop program because they suspended it. And this is, the, this is why I put the study together, because I wanted them to at least start licensing pet stores mm -hmm. again. And then I realized that they don't really enforce, they're not enforcement agency. So at least if we can get them to see that there's a problem and it, uh, so, so part of this is for, uh, to get some licensing going again, so we can know who's actually selling puppy. And maybe local inspections would be another request. Um, the family puppy, they're USDA breeders. A lot of people are like, well, how do you know the puppy mills? Well, he told me that he works with Ken Bottringer in Indiana. He's an Amish. It's, you know, I saw pictures that looked okay. 
Well, if you look at the inspection reports, um, you know, they're all online, but people don't know how to go to them, and they're really long. They're only for three years. I have them going back as far as I have another website. I can go to Pet Shop Puppies. And I thought, well, a lot of people aren't going to know how to look at all these inspection reports and see what I'm seeing. I, I know I can filter, and I know which ones I, you know, how to identify and stuff. So I thought it'd be easier just to put it all in one chart. So if I'm meeting with mall management or something, I can say, well, this is a list of their, su their suppliers. They have, so they're doing their own surgeries. They have veterinary care problems. They have cleanliness problems, primary. There's some serious, it's just a summary, just to give you a visual that there's a lot of them that have um, different, multiple violations. And I, I actually enhanced this to put the number of violations on each one. So if they were written up for cleanliness repeatedly, then I put the number on there just, just to show you that they're not clean. They're not, uh, you know, they do have violations. They are in trouble. And then you could go further and uh, read the inspection, the inspection reports yourself. But um, usually if it's a large kennel, they have multiple breeds and they have violations on their inspection reports, that, that, that's the red flags for me. You know, they have uh, over 50 dogs. Um, you know, um, 14 different kinds of breeds. It's like they're not specializing in schnauzers. <laughs> you know, they're just mass producing puppies for the country. So these are just some pictures of our undercover work in Indiana. Um, this is just a typical Amish hutch. I just call them Amish hutches. You can see that they, um, what they do is they come out from the top and on the bottom, and then they have the wire floors and then the feces drops in here. And you can tell that they have been cleaning daily. Um, but this is just a typical, and it's very limited space. I, it's kind of cramped. And, a lot of the dogs were circling um, because this is the board. And then the zoning will require them to have a fence for noise. So they don't even get like a breeze and they don't get a view. They, they're just trapped in these touches with these privacy fences. And that's a very typical one. The larger dogs get these little bigger places. But a lot of them don't really have shade or exercise areas. We can also go to zoning. And these are pictures from zoning. And this is the primary supplier, the family puppy. And this is just not a professional to me at all. I mean, I just, I would combine them their whole life, you know, so uh, I wouldn't buy from them. <clears throat> so, like I said, there's only nine. You can see that none of them are in the Detroit area. So if you go into a pet store and they say, oh, I'm working a local breeder in Sterling Heights or something. And you're like, well, there are no USDA licensed breeders, so <laughs> who are you working with? <laughs> so is anybody inspecting this place? So you can see that we only have nine compared to like Ohio, which would have like 200. USDA licensed commercial breeders. Um, it's not illegal for the pet store to work with that unlicensed breeder in Sterling Heights, but it would be illegal for the Sterling Heights breeder to sell to the pet store. So the breeder would be in trouble, but not the pet store. What are the blue markings? That's where the USDA licensed kennels are. There's 11. Oh, well, there's some of research. So maybe it's just really not it. <laughs> I might not have, or maybe I just I put on some unknowns. I don't know check, but thank you. You are a college student. So I'll go back and update that slide. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the kennel um, license study we did. Jill had a great idea to support our local legislation that was on the Michigan main site was introducing is find out how many licensed kennels by county do we have in Michigan and where are the puppy mills and how many dogs do they have. So just a, there's 83 counties and I think we went through 63 so far. And you can see that most of them are on the west side of the state as far as the number of licensed kennels. Um, but when we looked at like ones that have the number of breeding kennels, Mount Calm, which is right here, and St. Clair have kind of the most, they seem to be the most suspect. But whenever you get down here along these, you know, you think that they're kind of, you have some Amish communities and things like that. But, um, we know that there's probably some activity as well. We, we, some of those are down there. But, you, but the, the northern part is very few um, dog breeding kennels. There's a lot of um, snow dogs, um, sled dogs, and hunting kennels. And I should point out too, in Michigan, you may already know this, but in the state of Michigan, you do not have to have a license to have a breeding kennel uh, if you don't want. Um, all the law says is you have to license your dog. So if you have three or more dogs uh, in your kennel for commercial purposes, whether it's a hunting dog, kennel boarding, breeding, sled dogs, whatever, you may buy a kennel license from your county as sort of a bulk rate licensing thing. When you buy that one kennel license, then you don't have to license each one of your dogs. So if you choose, if you if you are a breeding facility and you have 50 dogs and you just want to license each dog, that's fine. You don't have to get a kennel license and you only don't have your records. Uh, and, and so uh, 
So that's how we did. We FOIA the Freedom of Information Act each county, uh, mostly the treasurer's office. If you have kennel licenses, you can send us a list. But you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Um, so the 1,500 pounds that we looked at, we didn't visually go out and look at them. We looked at them online just to figure out if they're green or not. Um, we, we found 568 of the 63 counties um, have breeding facilities or licenses. I mean, the puppy mills, okay. But um, some of them were pet sitting rescue shelters, boarding, and some of them we just couldn't tell. Obviously, I'm not concerned about them because if they're not really advertising, they don't have a lot of dogs, I wouldn't be concerned. But of the 500 um, breeding kennels, 34 of them have over 50 dogs. That's not that bad, and a lot of them were exceeding, like we were in the you know, 200 range even. So I think our local communities don't really let them get that big. Um, but if we were to pass legislation that would have a cap so the people from Missouri can come here, we would only be impacting 34, we know that around that, you know, 4% of the kennels would be impacted by legislation with a cap. So we think maybe a cap would be something we could do here in Michigan because not a lot of people would oppose it. Um, kennels with red flags, I looked at kennels that have more than four different kinds of breeds, and they're like the popular breeds. Um, if they were heavily advertising, or if they have these designer dogs, that kind of, kind of gives me a red flag that maybe they're in business, you know, they're marketing these designer dogs. Puggles and Morkies and Shitties. Maybe a new name. Shifu. Yeah, Shifu. <laughs> Oh, that was it. Okay. <laughs> I just kind of chopped it off there. But, um, yeah, so, um, you yeah, know, those are the kind of projects that we don't just protest, but we do the, the research and um, we do try to do education. But I think a lot of my work is um, I really, I want to make sure no new stores open selling puppies. Um, kind of my personal thing, no new, go, no, and they're easier to target new stores. And just to really to educate the community about these top stores, because I think if we can cut off that pipeline, then we'll discourage a lot of, um, a lot of breeders, you know, because then people will think not just pet stores, but then when they answer classified ad, but whenever they're buying a dog, they'll know about puppy mills. So if you just even start with pet stores, because that's what people are familiar with, that's one way to get it out. But I, I do think education is the key, because I can't go around shut, shutting out all these. If another one will pop up, you know, but if you can educate people so they know what the word puppy mill is, then they'll be more conscientious about when they buy a dog. And then we, we also secondarily um, promote shelters. So if I'm at a protest and someone says, hey, we're looking for a <coughs> We say go to the local shelter, and so we try to do a lot of um, shelter promotion. If anyone wants to get involved, you can see there's a lot of different things to do. I mean, there's the protest information booth, but we're lobbying too, so you can just be a part of uh, my action alerts. If you just want to participate online, just join my group and you'll get some notifications about, you know, lobby for the Pups Act, and um, it, you know, I'll tell you how to do that, send a letter or whatever. It just appeared to me that uh, the areas with the highest homeless pets were also the areas where they were selling pets. Oh, the Detroit area? Yeah. We, okay. yeah. And, and, and the other metro areas where they're selling is also where they're having the highest problem keeping yeah. pets in homes. We, the HSUS estimates from two to four million puppies are, are pumped out in, a, in the uh, market every year from uh, puppy mills. Uh, which, of course, is going to overload the shelters and the rescues and, and those who are desperately trying to address the federal population as it is. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not surprised. Breeding kennels, is that a nicer name for a puppy mill? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess, I don't know, it would be commercial kennels. A lot of times the store will really admit that they work with commercial kennels. When you, were, when you think of commercial, you think of this is for profit kind of thing. Um, puppy mill isn't really an not, official term. No, it's it's basically we, we define it as any breeding facility that that takes that, that treats profit uh, as more important than the animal welfare. So it could have ten dogs or it could have five hundred. Pam, you've done an outstanding job here. You. You're the Henry Ford for the puppy mill. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I had no experience. So I always think, well, if I do these presentations, maybe people will think, well, I could take on initiative, like the dog chaining Heather or anything. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool when people, you know, you think you can't do anything on your own, but then just, just get a little organized online and people are like, yeah, I want to do that too. And then you just figure it out as you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and More I can't. than organized, you're a force to deal with. Yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but I can't stress enough the importance of, of the research because when I, I came here a couple of years ago, I was a Minnesota state director before this, everybody kept saying, oh, well, don't worry about Michigan, we're not a puppy mill state. We don't have puppy mill states. <laughs> and I finally just thought, well, let's just find out. And he had the crazy idea about FOIA in 83 counties. Now, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. No, but I open that database every day. Someone says, oh, I saw a fucking on some road. And now like, we can find it. All right. What, what, what's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's file so, a we did. We crunched the number. She crunched the number. She's a number person. You don't want me anywhere in the numbers. But, um, yeah, but, um, and so we can prove. And, and when we go to legislators, you know, he, if he's in St. Joseph County, he can say, oh, we don't have those here. Well, as a matter of fact, we have this and this and this county yeah. has this many dogs and this many violations. We have a lot of Mellers and Yoders and bond traders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you talked about how you started off not knowing um, where to go from here, and you've done an incredible job in a short amount of time. Um, can you give a little more detail on how you became going from just one person to having a full team? Right, right. Well, when I did that parade, I just started, I think I went to Pet Finder and did the code that I called Every Rescue. <laughs> like they gotta care about this pet store, yeah. right? They came to the per to the parade really quiet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a parade. Like I think a lot of rescues might not, you know. It's like there's some people that like to care for the dogs, and there's some people that want to like confront these pet stores. You, know, you don't always have the same combination of the drive to help animals. So. I think the rescues were like, what are you getting us involved in? Are the police going to come? And they were really <laughs> nervous. And um, so I, I just thought that, that seemed like the most likely crowd. But I think it's just people that it just takes a certain kind of personality to want to do outreach or activism. Um, I, like, I was kind of really comfortable. I call them rally sometimes. Mm -hmm. People don't feel comfortable with protesting. But um, so I think that's like, I just started a bit to calm people when I started. And then when you do a meetup group, um, it's kind of more organized and they have a calendar, a message board, and um, communication. So you, then I just started socially networking through the meetup kind of. Meetup.com? Mm -hmm. Yeah, meetup.com. So I started my own meetup. And that's, that's I kind of, um, I was kind of doing what SMART was doing. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Southeast Michigan Animal Rights Team. They have a meetup group, and I just kind of mimicked with, I just really, well, she's the one that gave me the idea for the rescue parade, too. So I get my ideas from everywhere, like best friends. I had lunch with the woman that runs the Puppies on Products campaign, and I said, what, what do I do? You know, I'm going to go into flight with this guy that is so good with the media, and he just has an answer for everything. And she's just giving me ideas, like, well, tell people that he's ripping them off. <laughs> They'll respond to rip off. And I'm like, okay, that's a good terminology. <laughs> You're going to get ripped off, because some people don't, Think about they can't think about the kennels, but they, they look at themselves and think they're victims. There are different angles, you know. But she told me about the how it because we were spending so much time at the pet land. I told her, what are we going to do? We've been here for almost two years. We can't just stay at this one pet store for two years. Or the morale's going to go down. Then Animal Plant came out with the pet land. We're like, yeah, we're back. <laughs> but, uh, so you know, she said, well, get out in the different neighborhoods. So I'm always looking for ideas. The the um, Caps organization in New York said, well, you should, if you're going to do an effective campaign, you've got to be there for at least six months every Saturday and have 10 people. I said, okay, well, that sounds like a good, someone gave me a strategy. I gotta, so that makes sense. So that's kind of what we do is we do a pilot rally, and then we'll do a roundabout just to kind of give them a warning. And then we give them a break a little bit, and then we come back for a whole full-out boycott. So when I say boycott on our meetup, that means we're going to be there every Saturday for a long time. And usually, I have never walked away yet. So <laughs> even if I say six months, it just means we're going to give them a little bit of a break, and then we're going to come back. Because I think that if they know that we're going to go away, they'll try to weather the storm. And I need to send messages that once we come to your store, we're not going away. And I think that I need more enemies. I finally got a breeder that called me and told me to go to hell yesterday. <laughs> and I'm like, I know you're a breeder. I know you are. You know, some of the things she was saying. I'm like, I know you're a breeder. I am targeting Shaggy Dog now. Yes. <laughs> and she works with one of the largest um, USDA Michigan stores. I told her, I said, I'm going to have to. I don't know if you're like cleaner than the guy down the road, but you work with the largest puppy mill in Michigan. You know, the Dory and Lyron. Yep, Dory and I think that's who called me. Yeah, I think she's the one that called me. But yeah. Oh my gosh. I think it, I just, because the way she was reading from that message board, you know, it's like, Anyway, so anyway, so I, I think we're doing something right. Even though I hate to 
target the family owned, but she pulled up in a Lexus and I'm saying, well, if you're not hurt here, you're right under her. Many, <laughs> 20 years ago, they were just groomers and they ran her good business, but then they saw that yes. they could make money making puppies. And it, I drive by there every single day and they have that huge It's puppy. a huge sign. And yeah. it drives me insane. She was pacing. We did our pilot rally this month. And just two people, I usually go small. You want to come out and talk to me, talk to me. I'm, you know, like, I'm not threatening. Right. She pulled up in her Lexus and I had my little camera there and she's like, she got back in her car. <laughs> she went in the store and I'm like, yeah, well, I thought we could talk about it. I, already, I always call them first just to make sure they know what I'm doing and that I did my homework and I know everything about their business. So she she realized it. She said, I don't know how you can look at yourself in the mirror. I'm like, I was actually looking at myself in the mirror because I had to go in the bedroom and be like, the dog. And I thought, I'm fine. Can you look at yourself in the mirror? But I'm usually trying to be very professional and I don't. I don't come across threatening, but I think right. standing there with a sign is pretty intimidating. Mm -hmm. I think she's I think she's worried. So we're gonna go back and do a little roundabout coming up with a couple weeks. Where is that? It's in um, Shelby Township. A man like between like twenty one and twenty. And just down yeah. the road is Unica Pet Supply, which has right. a verbal problem with sick dogs and he imports from out of state too. So if we can get into that neighborhood, I think we'll be really good for education. Any other questions? How far west do you go? She, all the way west. Yeah, quarter. Okay. So, okay, just the last question. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to see there's one on 40 near me. I gotta check it out. I wonder how far west. You uh, yeah, we and we can. I have information about the store, but as far as campaigns, we're gonna 